Hello everybody, my name is Kate Olaf and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to go over the top 5 money mistakes you can make and tips you can use to help avoid them. So the first money mistake that you can make is not subscribing to my channel and hitting the like button. I wish I was kidding, but I am a little bit serious. If you guys enjoy these videos as much as I enjoy making them, please consider subscribing. That way I don't have to keep asking you to do it. So with that being said, let's jump into the first worst money mistake that you should try and avoid. The first money mistake that you should avoid at all costs is buying a brand new car. There are many reasons why buying a brand new car is a terrible idea, but for the sake of the video, I'll be going over the main reason. And the main reason is because buying a brand new car is a terrible investment. Let's say you bought a new car for $25,000 and so you take out a loan to pay for it. And let's say you obtained an average interest rate of 5.27% and you also got a loan term for 60 months. You would be approximately paying $475 a month, not including insurance, gas, or maintenance. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't care how much money you make. $475 a month is a lot of money to pay for a depreciating asset. The average income in the US is $31,133 and the average car payment is $550. This means considering averages that most people are spending more than 20% of their yearly income on a depreciating asset. This is how most people live. In fact, a recent 2021 study showed that 85% of newly purchased non-commercial vehicles are financed in the US. And take note that that statistic considers both new and used vehicles. Brand new cars also depreciate in value very quickly. Now there are instances when certain makes or models of a car, especially classics, can be considered as a potential investment, but keep in mind for this video I'm talking about the public and their daily driver vehicles. You can expect the value of a new vehicle to drop 20% after the first year you own it. But guess what doesn't drop? your car payment. So most people end up getting stuck and paying for a vehicle that's not even worth their payments. This is a terrible cycle that most people sadly end up in. And I believe the reason for this is because nobody is taught differently. People tend to just follow the crowd, whether it's their parents or peers, and they simply just don't know. But I am here to tell you that every financial decision you make should be based upon an investing strategy. If you are spending any type of money, you need to ask yourself, what kind of return am I seeing? And these returns don't necessarily have to be money. They can be freeing up your time or things that give you enjoyment. But if you are spending money like nobody's business and you are not considering the return, you're going to end up very broke someday. So how do we avoid this new car problem? My advice to you would be to buy cheap and used. Now do not mistake cheap and used for dirty and old. There are plenty of well-kept cars out there that you can find on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist for cheap. I personally found my car on Facebook Marketplace and it was a steal for 3,600 bucks. It was an original owner who changed the oil every 3,000 miles and there wasn't a dent or scratch on the car. I had the money saved up and I went and and I bought it cash. This way I have no car payment and I can put money aside in my budget for maintenance and gas. Now I enjoy nice cars just as much as the next guy but you have to choose whether or not driving a nice car is really necessary. The second money mistake you should avoid is expensive housing. Now, expensive housing is going to differ depending on your age. If you're a young person like myself and you still live with your parents, the best way to save money in this area is just to stay home rent free. Even if your parents are charging you rent, I'd imagine it's going to be cheaper than going out and renting your own place. To the young viewers watching, I do not recommend moving out unless you absolutely have to. To. There are just too many benefits you may not realize when living at home. One of the main benefits is that you get to save money. If anyone should be living at home, it's young people. That way we can figure out what it is we exactly want to do without people completely judging us. I mean, it's not bad that you're 21 and you still live with your parents, but if you're 40, we may have a problem. If you are older and you currently already have your own place, I would recommend thinking about your housing situation and asking yourself if your housing is excessive in any way. Now by no means am I saying not to spend money on housing. I mean it's one of the essentials to life. What I am saying is that if you're a single person and you live in a five bedroom home by yourself, 
maybe it'd be best to figure out a different living strategy where you can profit more money at the end of the day. Now I understand housing is going to be the most expensive area in one's life. So how do we simplify our living and make it more profitable? Well, one option is that you can always find a cheaper place. But let's say you don't want to do that. Another option you could do is called house hacking. So say you are a younger person and you have to move out into an apartment. Say it's a three bedroom apartment and you don't like the idea of living alone. Well, instead of paying all the rent yourself, you can grab two of your friends, put them in the other two rooms and have them split the rent with you. Now this gives you the ability to still live on your own, but in a cheaper way. This also works with single family homes or multifamily properties. Say you're that single dude living in the five bedroom home. Maybe you rent out the four other bedrooms to some of your closest friends and have them split your mortgage with you. Reality is there are ways to cut down on your housing costs if you just think outside of the box. The third money mistake you should avoid at all costs is spending more money than you make. This is self-explanatory in the fact that everybody knows when they can't afford something. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. This seems to be a problem particularly for young people. They tend to be influenced by things a little easier which makes them spend more money. Driving the nice car to make yourself look rich is a great example of this. The only successful way you're going to accomplish not spending more money than you make is by self-control. It takes discipline and confidence in yourself to control how you spend your money. If spending is an issue for you, I would recommend taking it a day at a time and slowly working your way up into a frugal lifestyle. Don't try and completely flip overnight because it's going to be hard to maintain and control. A budget would help in this area because you have a reference to know how much money you can spend. The fourth money mistake that you should avoid at all costs is not investing. The younger you are, the better you're off. There's a saying that says the earliest you can start investing was yesterday. In other words, if you are not currently investing in some way, you are already behind. Whether it's stocks or your own business, investing early on is what splits the difference between living paycheck to paycheck and living financially free. I will say this, whatever you decide to start investing in, do your homework. The danger of any investments is that there is always risk, so make sure to do your due diligence and research what it is you're investing in. It'd be a shame to invest all your hard-earned money and then eventually lose it all because you weren't careful in the beginning. If you are watching and you do not currently invest, feel free to go check out my video where I go into how you can start investing in stocks. And the fifth money mistake you should avoid is not having an emergency fund. According to moneyunder30.com, only 23% of Americans have enough saved in their emergency fund to cover six months of expenses. Emergency funds are important because they act as personal insurance. They are what you turn to when life throws you unexpected curveballs. The benefit of them is that it gives you a peace of mind when these unexpected things happen. The rule of thumb is to have enough money in your emergency fund to cover six months worth of expenses. This is something that would have helped out a lot of people in the middle of 2020. If you were to suddenly lose your job, how would you maintain your lifestyle? That's a scary question to ask if you don't currently have an emergency fund. So how do you go about creating one? Well, within your budget, another one of your savings portals, aside from your investment portal, should be labeled emergency fund. And every paycheck, you set aside some money until that emergency fund reads six months worth of expenses. The beauty about the fund is that once it's capped out, you don't have to keep putting money in it. That money sits there until the day comes where you have to use it. So those are the five worst money mistakes mistakes you should avoid at all costs in order to put you on a path toward financial freedom. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you thought this video was helpful for you. Also, once you subscribe, tap the notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any of my new videos. And as always, I'm Kate Olaf, and I'll see you in the next one.